Well, we're talking about crafting a lyric and a melody for the local church. And one of the first questions that we want to ask as we begin this journey is, where does inspiration come from? It seems to me that a lot of songwriters are the moment of inspiration. So how do we facilitate this inspiration, and where does it come from anyway? Well, I want to suggest one thing today that I think will help us understand. Uh, first of all, it's this. We cannot control the moments of inspiration, but we can control our influences. Did you catch that? We can't control the moments of inspiration, but we can control our influences. And I would dare say that our influences, the things around us, are what are going to lead us to inspiration. So what are those influences? I want to suggest to you that there's actually six main things that typically inspire people. Here's the first one. Life experiences, the things that people can relate to. You know, we're all here on planet Earth and we're all experiencing different emotions, but there's this kind of common ground uh, that we all kind of experience things to do with the human life, be it relationships or be it circumstances, pain, trials. Those are subjects that every human being can relate to and often they're the source of inspiration. So inspiration first and foremost comes from life experiences, the things that we go through, the things that we experience. The second thing, inspiration comes from nature and creation. I don't know about you, but when I walk outside and I see, I, I look out my window here and I look at the created order, I'm reminded of Psalm 19 that says, uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, and I just look around and I see the created order and I see the design to it and I'm inspired. I'm inspired by the handiwork of, of God in creating the whole earth and designing it. A lot of people are like that. They will go out into nature. They will find that their most inspiring moments come from taking a, a walk out in nature or maybe going uh, you know, for a hike out up into the mountains. But creation can be a real moment of, of inspiration. The beauty that is self-evident in creation can lead people to, uh, to moments of inspiration. That's the second thing. Here's the third thing. Books and poetry. I'm constantly telling my songwriting students that if you want to be a great lyricist, and if you want to be, you know, in terms of writing Christian music, if you want to be a great theologian, which you are when you write about God, uh, you ought to study great theology and you ought to study uh, great masterpieces, great works uh, by people that have gone before us. So many brilliant minds have gone before us. And there's something about being able to read about their journey and to read about the conclusions that they found that will inspire us. And sometimes when you're looking for a, a unique expression or a unique way of communicating an idea, um, it'll be something that has been said by someone who's gone before. So I'm always encouraging my songwriting uh, students to keep a book of quotes and to really uh, keep their antennas up as they read and as they, as they listen to other people, even as they hear people pray, to always have their antennas up and be thinking, okay, is this something that needs to be said in, in a corporate expression? Can this be built into a lyric? But books and poetry, um, I really, really encourage. There's a great book on Puritan prayers called The Valley of Vision. And what it is, is it's a collection of prayers that were written by the Puritans. And just the richness of theology and the richness of spiritual expression is something that we simply just don't have in the same way. And, and things like that, resources like that, can be a great uh, asset in terms of inspiration. <clears throat> I also love reading theological works, things by C.S. Lewis, things by Francis Schaeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. All of that information um, that you can fill your mind with can, can really facilitate a moment of inspiration in terms of writing a fresh lyric about God. <clears throat> and of course, on the heels of that, the fourth thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is the Word of God. Uh, the cool thing about the Word of God is that it is inspired. It says The, the Bible says about itself that the Word is living and active. Uh, so when we read it and it comes off the pages, we can bank on its power. Uh, and I always encourage students, you know, to ask the question, where is the authority in what you're writing? When you're wanting to write a corporate expression in worship, where is the authority? Is it in the words that you say? Do the words that you say have the ability to bring life and to change hearts? Well, the answer is clearly no. But the words of the Bible, the book that God has written, uh, do have the ability to do that. So when we open up this book, we're actually looking into the face of God. And when we write the words of this book into our lyrics, we're actually placing truth inside the hearts of people. Um, as they sing it back to God. And God loves to hear his truth sung back to him. And I would argue that probably the strongest corporate worship songs are the ones that are inspired by the word and ones that um, are based and have the word of God written right into them. Uh, I would argue, too, that those are the songs that, the last, the, that, that stand the test of time. And uh, that comes by no surprise because God has promised us that his word will go out and it will not come back void and it will it'll accomplish its purposes. Uh, and the Bible also says about the word that uh, it'll never pass away. These are the words of Jesus Christ, uh, the words of God the Father, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and they will endure forever. 
So the Word of God can be a real source of inspiration. And I'm always encouraging my, my songwriting students to really pour themselves over the Psalms and to look at the way that the psalmists expressed their love for Jesus Christ and to really start there. Uh, some of my favorite worship songs, corporate worship songs, have been taken right out of the Psalms. You know, I think of uh, Shout to the Lord by Darlene Check. If you read between Psalm 90 and Psalm 100, all those phrases, I sing for joy at the work of your hands, all taken from the Psalms, all inspired by the Word of God. So the Word of God it can be something that leads us to inspiration. Here's the fifth thing, uh, tragedies and trials, the pain that we endure. Again, this is a human characteristic that everyone faces. Everyone goes through pain. Um, the great thing about pain as a Christian is that God never wastes our pain. He always wants to use it for the greater good. And I'm often reminding songwriters, you know, if you're going through a crummy time or if you, you, know, you, you broke up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or if you're going through a real trial, um, that's the time to get out the pen and paper and to start expressing what God uh, is doing in your life. Because what you'll find is that uh, the inspiration will come very quickly and you'll be able to pour out your emotion and your heart in a way that you normally wouldn't had you not been going, going through those experiences. So always be ready to capture those moments and take advantage of those moments and learn that about yourself. Learn how to detect when you are feeling emotional about something and help channel that, you know, be it putting your instrument around your neck or getting in front of a keyboard or getting out a scratch pad and a piece of paper and channel that and just ask God what he would have for you right in those moments. And you'll be surprised at the inspiration that comes. And finally, here's the sixth thing. Uh, people are inspiring. The friends that we make along the journey of life. I've met so many interesting people in my journeys, and I tend to be a conversationalist. I love asking questions and learning about people. And people are, frankly, interesting. And to hearing somebody's story and to hear somebody's testimony about how they came to the Lord or what they're going through or the struggles that they're facing or the joys that they're experiencing, people can be inspiring. And sometimes it's not even so much what people say as it is observing how they live their lives that can be inspiring. So never neglect the opportunity to listen to somebody's story. You never know. It could be the start of a song. Um, so many songs have been written. Uh, I was listening to a song by Amy Grant not too long ago that was inspired by a friend uh, that had shared with her her struggles of being sexually abused when she was young. And all Amy did was just listen to this woman's story, and out of it came the inspiration for a song. Uh, that, that has brought hope to a lot of other people that have been in that situation. So never neglect, never, never miss the opportunity to sit down with somebody, to hear their story, and to look at it as a possible avenue of inspiration. So again, we're asking the question, where does inspiration come from? And we're, uh, we're, we're suggesting one key idea, and that we cannot control the moments of inspiration, but we can control our influences. And the suggestion today is that our influences really come from six areas. First, uh, life experiences, the things that people can relate to, the common ground we share as human beings, uh, nature and creation, the beauty that we see around us in creation, books and poetry, the wisdom of those who have gone before us, uh, the Word of God, which is living and active, the source of all authority pertaining to the Christian believer. Uh, fifth, the tragedies and trials, the pain that we endure, it's never wasted. God wants to channel those things and uh, help us use them as expressions of worship. And finally, the sixth thing is people, the friends that we make along the journey of life and just taking the opportunity to listen and to experience what someone else has gone through. So hopefully this puts some handles on things and helps you understand where inspiration for congregational uh, melodies and congregational lyrics comes from. And hopefully you'll be able to put some of these things into action as you write some of your best songs.